good afternoon everyone it's a ronak shah here uh, i welcome you all for the copernical alloys webinar to, in today's webinar we are going to explore the new alloys how is going to what are these advantage how it's going to beneficial to the industry and all so let's begin with the tensions the introduction of tensions let's begin with that we having uh, like uh, many of our sister concern like marathon heaters ast equisoft and uh, in tensions we having different units our 60% revenue generated from thermocouples and sensors 29% sales and revenue generated from the cables and 11% from the heaters so let's begin with that we having more than 600 employees like a uh, 75 country around the globe we are present and we are doing around 42 million dollar us the sales <clears throat> also basically we having total five units the unit 1 which is deal with the third temperature sensors unit 2 which is deal with the heaters and pyrometers there is a unit also which is deal with the thermo wells and furnaces the unit uh, there is also one unit which is uh, dealing with the nickel conductor cables and mi cables one unit deal with the pvc cable we having our manufacturing facility at two places one is in germany one is in indonesia so basically in our these are the our key products in temperature sensors we having a key products like thermocouple pyrometers calibration instruments and all that so these are we are manufacturing wide range of pyrometers a part of that our key products is a cables there is a different type of insulated cable ptf epvc ht cables mi cables so we are we having a wide range of cable products so we manufacturing we having our facilities uh, at uh, udaipur for the cable manufacturing uh, in heating solutions we provide like a band heaters uh, annealing furnaces oven is cartridge heaters Uh, paid heaters, different types of heaters we are manufacturing. So in heating systems, we are providing a large scale of uh, heating solutions. We also provide this uh, <coughs> uh, heat resistance alloys manufacturing unit in Udaipur, where we making the heat resistance alloys uh, in goods. We melt here in good making here. After the in good, we go for the rolling. Uh, and after the rolling the different types of drawing he get and you after the drawing we achieve the respected size <clears throat> so let's begin with that what is this uh, alloys are contained uh, how these alloys are uh, what are the grades what are its properties and how this industrial uh, applications are affected with this uh, alloys basically in copper nickel alloys was developed in 1976 in germany while the alloy has been transferred to the us and now only us and germany and somewhere in china also they are manufacturing chinese merchants are there but in india we are the only one uh, who are making such precision alloys um, let's begin with the what is a cu and i alloys which is this is also known as a low resistance alloys in basically copper is a largest individual content while the nickel is a transition element with the manganese and st uh, strengthening element iron so there are basically four elements major element play the role to making this copper nickel alloys one is a copper one is a nickel one is a manganese and one is iron <coughs> wow why adding the nickel we, we can add the aluminum as well but uh, the thermoelectric force has been improved the amount of nickel improvement which is the in which which only possible which are only seen in low resistance alloys so let's begin what are the types of low resistance alloys so uh, we we having a manufacturing facility at udaipur where we can make the inputs we having a vacuum induction melting after the vacuum induction melting as i said we have a rolling after the rolling we have a facility for cold drawing and different types of annealing like pit annealing bright annealing we do it here so our uh, standard procedure for the making is d as per the dean 17471 so as per the dean we are six grade manufacturing here uh, if you if you if you go through the slide we can see that the amount of nickel is has been from 2% to 44% and rest of well the element of copper and manganese mentioned on the chart 
So if you go to the alloy phi, you can see the 2% of nickel by 98% of other elements like copper. When alloy 6, uh, so when 6% of nickel and 94% of copper. YCU Ni10, we see in the 10 percentage of nickel and 90 percentage of copper by 23 the manganese amount is higher side as this alloy playing a very wide role this is also known as alloy 30. in alloy 40 we having 30 percentage of nickel and three percentage of manganese and alloy 44 which is used as a thermocouple also which having a one percent of manganese and 55 percent of copper elements so these are the basically the amount uh, of uh, different grade of CU and alloys. Let's begin with the thermal properties. So if we go with the solidest temperature, both are, the, if the nickel range is improving, the temperature is also improving, while the operating temperature is also improving with the, with the phase of nickel additions. So the thermal conductivity is reducing while the adding the nickel, while mean, uh, thermal expansion is also reducing while adding the nickel. So copper having a more tendency to the uh, thermal expansion, which has been seen in the chart. So let's begin with the electrical property. So basically this is a low resistance alloy, which is known for like a constant resistivity with respect to the diameter. So the resistivity remains same with the CUNI2, CUNI6, CUNI10, CUNI23, CUNI30. So if we go with the 20 degree Celsius, the resistivity 5, 10, 15, 30, 40, and 49. So this resistivity playing a, a very important role. So that's very important things too. Let's begin with the hot strength and creep behavior. During the hot strength, after the alloying, hot strength has been improving and creep strength observed between 300 to 400 degrees Celsius. If we go with the operating temperature, which is seen, uh, this is the 300 to 500 degree temperature is there, which is much more efficient to, if we go with this temperature alloying, so this is the range which creep creep play very important role. So uh, that is the main important factor is that. So if we go with the hot strength, uh, you can see that hot strength is playing an important role while we having, uh, if we go with this uh, like a, the hardness measurement, the all hardness has been reducted to this uh, amount of uh, uh, improving in temperature, which is an improvement in nickel percentage, which showing clear that the Brenner hardness is also improved. So these are the very uh, important things to observe. Uh, while the creep strength is also improved, creep strength is observed between 300 degree to 400 degree Celsius which is very good amount of creep strength has been observed. If we change in hardness parameter, this is also above the 500 degree Celsius, we can observe that. So advantages, what are the advantages of pro resistance alloy compared to the other copper alloys and other low resistance alloys? Like uh, basically this is like a corrosion resistance and wear resistance with respect to the copper. The tendency over oxidization is little bit less compared to the copper, highly scrutinized against the stress corrosion cracking. So what happened in the most of the time when the dye is a small, uh, with the corrosion stress amount is in, implemented on the copper and we found it Tunis copper, while we adding the different elements, this tunis has been removed. It has a great machinability, easy to heat, excellent weldability, and high fatigue limits than other copper alloys. What are the applications? This my widely used in electrical resistors, sun switch units, low, low temperature heating cables, electrical heating pads, heating mats, heat exchange, pipe material for the chemical industry and all that. So this having a, this this application serving to the multiple industries and multiple sectors. So this is widely used alloys. A part of that, when we what are the our supplies? We can supply into the wire form and go from 0.16 mm to the 8, 8 mm. The surface finish with the luster finish. We can we cannot 
oblige with the oxidized panna oxidized surface we only supply to the luster finish surface